Good evening, everyone. It's Nikki Backerel D'Angelo here for another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. And we're here yet again on the eve of yet another Citizen Con. This year, I didn't get to attend. I chose to stay home because of the business that I do at work. And I also chose to stay at home because I have been painstakingly going through the process of applying for a new job. And that's also what's been keeping me a little bit away from here. A couple of other things have kept me away from here, and that's my addiction to actually playing the game and playing it so much I haven't actually pulled the footage to do a couple of videos. And there's specific reasons for this. I've been looking at the game from a different perspective lately, going back into it and trying to find the elements that are fun to play. And in doing so, I found the game very playable. But I also found it very playable for me. Somebody that likes to do the grindy stuff, the mining, the constant running of boxes, the moving very low volumes of cargo between different stations. Yeah, evidently I like to grind, which explains my love of World of Warcraft for so long, EverQuest before that, and, uh, well, I love to build too, and that's something I can't do in the game yet, so I couldn't even talk about that. But what I did find in my search for playability in Star Citizen was that it's probably not playable for everyone. There's so many bugs and so many unnaturally occurring glitches that I think the game might be a little frustrating for the not for those that don't have the intestinal fortitude to play games that just aren't finished. But on the horizon we do have some things that are hopefully going to change all that and that's 3.8 and 3.9. 3.8 and 3.9 the PTU patches or I should say the PU patches for Star Citizen that will be coming out in quarter 4 2019 and quarter 1 2020 are going to work on the playability of the game. They were going to work on such high-end words, and I, I say this is a high-end word, as server meshing, which is going to allow more of us to be in one place at one time. More friends, and I'm telling you, this is absolutely 100% always the case. More friends in, ca in game, more people in game, mean more fun in the game. And right now, I feel like things just are a little bit lacking. They're going to be making some other little adjustments to the gameplay, fixing missions, fixing the way that certain systems work, and they're going to be making the game much more playable for us. But what that does mean is that all of the wonderful things that were going to be coming out in these patches, like Microtech. Let's take Microtech, for instance, which is going to be the addition of a brand new planet inside of Star Citizen. And now that planet is going to be introduced sans its moons. Now, I don't see that as a big negative because I'd rather CIG release things when they're done than release things so broken that they're not playable. And that's just how they've done things in the past. I have been playing for so long and finding that I just don't think the average person is going to have fun in this game because there are times that I just don't find some of the things that I'm doing to be as fun as I expected them to be. Now, there are a lot of other things coming to the game, but we also have something big coming before that, and that's going to be the big anniversary sale. That's going to be a week and sometimes two week long celebration of Star Citizen's birthday. And this year it kicks off on Sunday. So tomorrow we have the big event, which is going to be CitizenCon. And then on Sunday, we have a week-long event that's going to be centered around us buying things from CIG. Now, hopefully, there's enough that comes out of tomorrow that's going to keep us excited and focused to make us want to participate in this week-long celebration and spend our hard, 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 see I'm trying to say this without laughing, but spend our hard-earned cash on even more ships. And 
just to give you an idea, I'm going to drop a graphic in here right now. As with past years, this year's anniversary sale is going to center around the individual spacecraft manufacturers. Beginning with, on November 24th, Anvil Aerospace, who is indeed the one company that is providing the most support for this year's CitizenCon, which is kind of hard to say because it's a fictitious, you know, it's a fictional company and they're not really providing the support for this particular citizen con it's us but it's the old hype about what's going on inside of the game so inside the game evidently there's going to be a big release and we all know that to be the carrick and we're going to talk about the carrick in a little bit and to go along with the carrick we have the snub nose fighter that goes inside of the carrick and it's not really a snub nose fighter it's more or less john Crichton's farscape one from the tv show farscape it goes inside of the carrick and it is there to help you navigate some of the more complex wormholes to navigate or jump points to navigate now we're going to be able to fly three of the ships for free and that's everybody for 24 hours and that's going to be the pisces which is brand new arrow which was dropped on us last year last minute as a flyable ship during during the last anniversary sale and of course the hawk on november 25th we're going to move to rsi and then we're going to have the constellation phoenix their luxury cruise ship well it's not really a cruise ship it's more like a mini yacht the mantis and the aurora mr now i don't know why they're putting the aurora in there probably because rsi doesn't have much more in there probably they should have put the ursa in there since not everybody has one i think more people have the aurora than any other ship that just makes me wonder why it's there november 26th we go on to consolidated outland Kruger and Tumbrel, where you'll be able to fly the venerable Mustang. Again, a lot of people have this. I don't know if it's a big deal, but we'll go with it. Cyclone, I do agree with. And then the P-52 Merlin, which I do agree with. That is a great ship. Well, what I really think is they should have replaced the Merlin with the P-72 Archimedes. That would have made more sense. And then you could take them to the racetrack and have some fun with them. November 27th, you're going to have Argo, and Argo is going to have something called the Mule here. Not sure what that is. We could talk about it. Mule, or is it the Mole? It's the Mole. And to me, the Mole is some kind of specific type of mining craft. And I'm wondering how that's going to play into the universe. We'll see how that works. But you're going to be able to fly the Prospector, which I do indeed tell everybody to go out and get a Prospector first. You're going to love life after you do so. The Razor, one of my favorite racers, and the Starfarer. November 28th is going to be the Alien Sail or Alien Free Flight. Look at it either way that you want to. Where Aopa, Asperia, and I forget the other name. It's, it's going to be Banu, right? So whoever's making the Banu ship. So you'll be able to fly the Kartu Al, the Blade, and the Defender. And I'm going to tell you. I love the Blade. I love the Defender. I'm still a little bit cold to the Card 2 Owl. November 29th, we're going to see some of my favorite ships in the whole game. And I know that some of you are going to make fun of me for this. But, you know, obviously I love the Gladius, and the Gladius Valiant is beautiful. The Vanguard is absolutely killer. And although there's absolutely no purpose for the ship in the game just yet, I love the Retaliator, though I hope someday they go back and give it a little bit of love on its interior and make it more um make it work better like add some feng shui to it make it flow better that would be wonderful drake comes on the 30th and drake i think they're making you wait for this one and this is my thought process here drake should have been one of the earlier ships in the list and i'm wondering if it's because there might be something coming from drake inside of citizen con it's it's just a thought i'm probably wrong with this one but i'm wondering if that's why it's a little bit later it, it it's just the cutlass is amazing the dragonfly is fun as hell and the herald is rip roaring fast getting around the systems and i think these are some great ships origin we have the 890 Jump, the 300 Series, and the M50, and all I could say is this. If you have an opportunity to fly the 890 Jump, do so. 
The M50, great racer, wonderful interceptor, 300 series, still is one of my favorite ships in the game. Then we go to the best in show, which is what was brought to us in that uh, kind of that competition. It was a survey. What was your favorite ship? And then you went head to head and voted each day. And here are the winners. The Caterpillar, the Hammerhead, the Drake Cutlass Black, and the Aegis Reclaimer. Now, two of those ships 100% belong there. I'm just going to say because the, I think the Cutlass is one of the best ships in the game currently, and the Caterpillar is absolutely the best cargo ship in the game currently. But with how few people actually were able to purchase the Hammerhead and the Reclaimer, yeah, it's thousands, but you know, when you look at close to a million people that are flying in the game, that's not that many. Maybe this is an opportunity that people could get to fly it, I don't know. But there could have been some other ships up there. But, you know, get on the Hammerhead. It's actually a pretty decent ship to walk around on. And that's it. That's the anniversary sale. Unless something big happens tomorrow where ships, like last year, that we didn't expect are released to everybody. But this year, what else could come out? Is it possible that they're going to go against everything they've ever said and release the F-8 for purchase? Or are we going to see something like an Anvil Battle Cruiser that we didn't expect to come into the game? And possibly even flyable? I know that will never happen, folks. It hasn't even been through Eva Cotti and you know what I'm saying. But I, I just don't know where to go. I think the Mole is going to be an important ship. So the Argo Mole, because mining is one of those professions in the game that's actually working. And I think having another ship that people could get into and fly around in and go out and mine makes a lot of sense. So I'm kind of up in the air here. I don't know which way they're going to go. The last thing that we need in game is another fighter. Yet last year, they gave us another fighter. And I don't think we need those. A drop ship in a game that we really don't have that play in the game yet? And why did we get the, the dropship? Who knows? I wonder if they're going to stay with that it makes no sense to release it at this time type of ship that they release, or they're going to actually make it relevant. Are they going to give us another salvage vessel? Are they going to give us a different type of explorer? Something that's more geared towards looking for minerals in rocks, looking for gases that are in the different parts of the solar system looking for wormholes are they going to give us more of a corporate uh, like a mini corporate headquarters that you can have which i already think is the 890 jump what kind of ship could it possibly be i don't know i kind of hope it's something big and giant that an org could buy and use as their home but we already have the kraken we already have the Javelin. We already have the Idris. So, you see, I don't know where they're going with this. I think I'm going to be as shocked this year as I was last year when they revealed to us the ships that will be out for sale during this year's CitizenCon. Now, some things that came out of CitizenCon, there's already been leaks. And there's been some feathers rustled, or ruffled, I should say, from the indication that the Carrick will not be flyable until February. Now, I want to ask everybody this. Is that a shock? Yeah, I didn't think so. It's not that I don't trust CIG to come out with things on time. It's that I've been playing the game and covering Cloud Imperium Games development of Star Citizen for a very long time. And I understand patterns, and I understand how things are released. One of the big things is the game would have to be beta tested. In this case, put up on the PTU, where first you would have a few weeks of the Evocati playing it, then you would have Wave 1 people come in and play it, then you would have the rest of the waves come in and play it. And in between each one of those waves, you would have multi multiple iterations of the patch that allows you to fly the Carrick 
each one improving upon the last, each one fixing bugs and introducing new ones. So when you look at this, I don't expect the first round of Evocati to come into play until like December 8th to 12th. That's when I expect the Evocati to have the game, playing it, and are actually testing different elements of 3.8. I don't expect any other waves in it until Christmas time. And I don't expect 3.8 to be out until February. And that, that's just me. Because it's really playability upgrades and a couple of other things inside of there. You know, we're going to go to Microtech. We're going to get some new features in the game. We're going to get potentially server meshing. I hope it comes in. I pray for it to come in. But did you really think that a ship with such a scale as a Carrick was going to be in the game that soon when potentially it's going to be what gets us to the next star system if Pyro is actually released. So there are so many rumors going on about this next patch, about Citizen Con. And by the time any of you watch this episode, a lot of them are going to come to pass. Because it's right now almost 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's uh, Greenwich minus five. And by the time I get up in the morning, Citizen Con will be in full swing. So people are gonna walk through that door. They're already gonna know what the new ships are. They're gonna have their posters. They're gonna have their swag bag. They're gonna know everything that's going on. And I love this day because when I wake up tomorrow, it's going to be Christmas for me. I know, I know. I, I'm not going to get go on a road of apologizing for CIG. They're taking forever to make this game happen. But in the long run, I'm just going to say this. With as long as they've taken, I love everything about this so far. And I can see how things are fleshing out over time. And I hope some of you can. And it does annoy me to all end that it is taking long on one hand. I guess I'm in my 50s now. Am I going to live long enough to see it done? And I know I will. But I just had friends of mine die from my graduating class in high school. You know, so I'm, I do worry somewhat. But I think I'm pretty healthy to live out until the release of this game. But, oh my God, it's, it's been a while. And now we're talking about the things that are actually turning the concept into a game. I can't wait for that to be done. Now, the footage that you watched today was just one of the days that I played through. I want to talk about this for about two minutes before I say goodbye to you. And go get some sleep and get ready for the big day. I played through about 20 to 26 hours, made a couple of, well, made just over 130, 140,000. This is early on. You can see I'm still at 26,000 over here. And I spent a lot of time just doing things like moving boxes. But what I never realized was how much money you can make in 3.7 by just going to caves and mining. Sometimes the hidden elements inside of the game are hidden within the features they're trying to test. And since cave mining came out the last time, they put a lot of things in these caves, a lot of minerals, that net you tons of money. And I'm telling you, it was probably to get a lot of people into those caves so they could find the bugs and fix them. So with the carrot coming out, I'm hoping, my fingers, my toes, my eyes are crossed, <laughs> hoping that they have some kind of preliminary version of the exploration system. Whether they say it's coming or not, I hope it's there. So we can start seeing how that's going to work, and we can start helping them make that a much better system over time. Yeah, I talked in circles today, and I really do appreciate you following me through to the end here. If you did like this episode, please click the thumbs up button below. 
If you are a subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And remember to click that, th that notification icon. See how excited I am? Click the notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. I hope everybody enjoys CitizenCon tomorrow and all your dreams and best wishes come true. I know I'll be lighting some candles tonight and praying on those shooting stars and hoping that somehow they shock me and bring out my Polaris as well as my Carrick. But that's it for today, folks. With that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.